server functions. We're going to try to do it in 10 minutes. We're going to cover aggregate functions, table value functions, scalar functions and loads of other bits. So if you like it, hit like for me, subscribe because I'm going to do a few more of these tutorials in just under 10 minutes. Lots to learn. Hopefully we can pass on this on to you. But any comments or feedback would be much appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. So what is a scalar function? A scalar function will accept one or more parameters and it will return a single value. Now that might be, in this example, I'm gonna show you how to do percentages. It might be strings, it might be time, it might be, it's all sorts of things. But in this example, I'm just gonna show you how to do a percentage calculator. The reason I use this is every few weeks while I'm working, I need to work out what percentage a number is of another number. So rather than grab the calculator or hop online or work it out and make mistakes, I've worked it out once, turned it into a function and I can throw those numbers in and I never have to work it out again. So what I'm asking here is my new number, that's the number that I wanna know, what percentage is this number of my original number? This is how I'm gonna call it. So in this example, what numbers, what percentage is 10 of 100? We, we know that it's 100, uh, sorry, we know that 10 is 10% 10 of 100. To do that, I'm gonna return a float, and this is my calculation just here, and this is where I'm saying I'm gonna return this result. So that's the structure of how we'd create this function. So we run that in. I'm gonna put it in AdventureWorks, although I could put this anywhere, because it's not relying on any tables or anything. I could put it in Master if I wanted, but we'll put it in AdventureWorks to keep it consistent. So that's run. And if I run this, it tells me it's 10. Now, if I wanted to know what is what percentage is 10 of 150, 6.67. So it's really handy, so I can work out, I can throw in any numbers there, and it'll just give me what percentage a number is of another number. Now that's a scalar function, and to find that, as I said, it's in AdventureWorks. And I'm gonna go down to programmability, I'm gonna look in functions, and we've got the scale of valued functions here. So if I expand that, we we'll need to refresh it, and we can see that it's just there. Now, you'll notice the names might be slightly different. The name, the naming convention of AdventureWorks is UFN for user-defined function, I believe, whereas I'm using just FN. Whichever works for you is fine, but that is a small overview of scale functions. So table valued functions. These are pretty cool to be fair. I really like them. They are, well, unlike other functions, a lot of other functions that return a single result, like your scalar functions, these return your result in the form of, you've guessed it, in the form of a table. So rather where we might put returns an int, returns a float, we're returning table this time. And what we're doing is we've, we've got our query here and it's gonna return this result set 290 rows but a person using an application they might just want to see people that were hired in 2007 or 2008 so what we can do is we can put the filter on there and we can just have the person call this function and they'll pass in the year which is great so um, we've run that let's execute this and we can see this is just people in hired in 2008. Likewise, we can change that value to 2007. Now, if we want to, so if you're asking how do you alter a function, for example, we might add in that, might add in that column. Um, and I'm gonna alter this and run it in. So that's now altered. Now this time, now when I run it, I can return my entity ID. Why might I need that? Now you might need it, as I've been saying before, 
is because we need to treat this as a table or treat it as a view. So what we can do is I can run this up here and I can now I can now join on to the person's table from this new table valued function. I wouldn't want to because I'm using it here, but if we ignore that and just go with the example and just pretend it's a, a complete another table. I can run that and I can join on to other tables from this table function, which is great, which is really, really good. Because what else we can start to do? We might just say, well, do you know what? I just want the first name, uh, go middle name, great job title, and um, we'll have to alias that. There you go. So we can start to select specific columns as well. Not just from a join, we can do that from here as well if we wanted. Um, which is fantastic, which is really, really good. Now, the downside to it is, I suppose it's not really a downside, it's what it's built and designed for, is that it'll only return one result set. Now, a lot of the time when I'm working with things like this, I like to use stall procedures, um, and rather than pass in the value here, I'd rather, if you can, it, depend, it depends how these things are being called, what their purpose is. But with the stored procedure, you can return one more result. You can return more than one result set. So if I'm looking down here, I've got exactly the same query. And this one, I've just added on a few more bits to it. And I can pass in my year here. So I'm passing that in here. We can see with the stored procedure, I can return more than one result set. That might not be needed. Depends on your use, your use for it. But that's the only thing I think store procedures have over table value functions. Well, one of the few. You can also use them in where clauses, which is good and bad. I don't like to do that personally, but people do. Now, over here, where are they located? Just here. So if I refresh this, we can see you use a defined function, employee higher year. So let's move on to aggregate functions. Now an aggregate function is going to take a result set and it's going to return a single value, it's going to aggregate it for you. Now here, as before, I'm going to run it in AdventureWorks 2019, although as it's not accessing any tables, you can really run it anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the table if it exists. That just enables me to run the routine again. Then I'm going to create a little temp table and I'm going to insert the values into it of Homer, Marge and Bart Simpson along with their age. So let's run this. It gives us three rows. Now I can select from this temp table. It gives us three rows. Now I've done some tutorials on count and average and min, which I can link to, which will give you a more thorough overview of it. But in this case, I am going to just select count and it's going to ask, it's going to aggregate all the rows and say how many results are there? How many rows are there? It's going to tell us there's three. Just like with sum, we're going to say, we're going to add up all their ages. It's going to tell us that. This might be really handy if you're looking at how much you've spent per month or how much you've received all those sort of calculations. I've got average, and that's gonna give us the average of their ages. The average age there is 33. And this one, the min, is gonna be a seven for Bar Simpson. Likewise, you can change it to max, and it will give you the maximum age. These, these are aggregate functions. Now, to locate these in AdventureWorks, going down to functions and We've got aggregate functions here, and these would be for ones that you create yourself, because these are empty. But the system ones, because these come built in from Windows, are very similar to the ones you use in Excel, if you're familiar with that, and they'll be in here. So those are the, here are some of the ones we've used here. Likewise, there's more in, down here for date and time ones, but those aren't the aggregate functions that we're showing. 
obviously if you want me to go into more tutorials on it let me know in the comments 